Hello everybody, welcome back to Weekly Life Wisdom. As always, I have been your host, Zero Yeti, and let's go ahead into it. The first animal of the week, being the guinea pig, or domestic guinea pig, also known as the cavy or domestic cavy, is a species of rodent belonging to the genus Cavia and the family Cavidae. Uh, breeders tend to use the word cavy to describe the animal while in scientific and laboratory context. However, it is far more frequently referred to by the common name of guinea pig. Despite their common name, guinea pigs are not native to Guinea, nor are they closely related biologically to pigs. Additionally perplexing is that no one seems to know where the name guinea pig came from. Uh, but we do know that guinea pigs themselves originated from the Andes Mountains in South America, where they originally domesticated as livestock from their wild ancestor, the Montane guinea pig, around 5000 BCE. Throughout much of their history, guinea pigs were raised predominantly for their meat, which is known as koi, uh, much like rabbits in other parts of the world. And they are still a staple in the diet of many South Americans. Guinea pigs are large for rodents, with the common pet breeds weighing between one and a half to two and a half pounds when fully grown, and measuring eight to ten inches in length. Some livestock breeds weigh up to six and a half pounds when fully grown, and just over one foot in length. They feed primarily on alfalfa, hay, and other grasses, but often supplement their diet with raw fruits and vegetables such as broccoli, uh, broccoli, apple, berries, pumpkin, cabbage, carrot, celery, and spinach. Guinea pigs are highly sociable animals, often living in groups of up to ten or more, frequently depending on one another for safety, security, grooming, and general well-being. Uh, they are so independent to the point uh, that in both Sweden and Switzerland, it is illegal to keep a guinea pig alone. Uh, biological experimentation on domestic guinea pigs has been carried out since the 17th century, with the animals being so frequently used as bottle organisms throughout the 19th and 20th century that the epithet uh, guinea pig came, to, came into use to describe test subjects. Since that time, they have largely been replaced by other smaller rodents, such as mice and rats. Guinea pigs reach sexual maturity around four to five weeks of age and mate year round. After a thirty after a sixty three to sixty eight day gestation period, uh, the mother will give birth to anywhere from one to nine pups, with three or four being the most common number of offspring. The young are born precocial, uh, and because guinea pigs participate in allo parenting, uh, they are often co raised by other females within the colony. And a guinea pig may live upwards of 14 years under ideal conditions. Next up is the American toad, which is a common species of toad found throughout Canada and the eastern United States. Uh, and it is divided into three subspecies, being the eastern American toad, the dwarf American toad, and the rare Hudson Bay toad. It is a medium-sized amphibian, uh, usually ranging in size from 2 to 4, to, well, two and a half to four and a half inches in size, or one and a half to two and a half for the dwarf subspecies. Uh, the color and patterning is somewhat variable, especially for females, and the skin color can change depending on the habitat, humidity, stress, and temperature of the local environment. Uh, they can be either a solid or speckled pattern, ranging in color from yellow to brown to black, or in the case of the Hudson Bay subspecies, a rusted red color. Additionally, all American toads sport a pair of paratoid glands near the back of the skull, which secrete bufotoxin, a mildly poisonous substance that makes the toad unpalpable to most predators. These amphibians can be found throughout a wide range of habitats, from wetlands to forests to grasslands, uh, preferring to live in and around semi-permanent freshwater pools of shallow water surrounded by patches of dense vegetation where they feed upon crickets, mealworms, earthworms, ants, spiders, slugs, centipedes, and moths, as well as other small invertebrates during the warmer months before hibernating in those patches during the winter. Mating takes place uh, in said pools uh, during the spring, and the call of the breeding male is a high trill, lasts around 6 to 30 seconds, similar to a ring telephone. The eggs, which are deposited in pairs of long springs, uh, long strings, not springs, uh, they will hatch roughly around 14 days after being laid. The tadpoles then grow and develop, eventually emerging as mature toads around 50 to 65 days later. 
Under ideal conditions, the American toad have been known to live upwards of 30 years. Next up is the African gray parrot, also known as the African gray, the Congo gray parrot, the Congo African, uh, the Congo African gray, or the African gray parrot. It is an old world species of parrot in the family Pisticidae, and it is a medium sized bird, measuring around 13 inches in length and sporting a 20 inch wingspan. Both sexes appear similar, sporting yellow eyes, black bills, and overall gray plumage, with the gray color on the head and the wings being generally darker than the rest of the body, and the feathers around the eyes being white, as well as the tail feathers being bright red in coloration. This intelligent and highly social avian is native to the dense tropical rainforest as well as more open dry woodland throughout Angola, Cameroon, the Congo, Gabon, the Ivory Coast, Ghana, Kenya, and Uganda. Here they spend most of their lives in the forest understory or on the forest floor, traveling and resting in flocks of up to 50 individuals. Their diet consists mainly of fruit, nuts, tree barks, tree bark, insects, snails, and seeds. An uh, interesting fact about African gray parrots is when a flock of captive, captive African greys were taught what the concept of money was via being given and uh, explained to what uh, tokens that they could then trade for toys and treats. Uh, the parrots immediately invented communism so that every member of the flock uh, would get an equal share. African gray parrots are monogamous, lifelong breeders who nest in tree cavities, with mating and reproduction occurring once or twice a year depending on resource availability. After mating, the hen lays between three and five eggs, which she incubates for around 30 days while being fed and cared for by her mate. Uh, the chicks fledge some 12 weeks after hatching, but will remain with and learn from their parents for an additional five, uh, four to five weeks before heading out on their own. African greys reach sexual maturity when they are between three and five years of age and may live up to upwards of 60 years under ideal conditions. I apologize for slurring my words. Next up is the red-eared slider, also known commonly as the red-eared terrapin, the red-eared slider turtle, the red-eared turtle, the slider turtle, or the water slider turtle. It is a subspecies of semi-aquatic turtle, which along with the yellow-bellied slider and the Cumberland slider, make up the species Trechomys scripta, or commonly known as the pond slider. They're native throughout the Mississippi River drainage and connected rivers with the United States and Mexico. Uh, from the Gulf of Mexico in the south to the Great Lakes in the north, and from the Rocky Mountains in the west to the Ohio River in the east. Here they prefer to live in areas of calm water where they are able to leave and return to the water easily so they can warm themselves up in the sun with individuals often found sunbathing in groups, or even on top of one another. They are an omnivorous species whose diet mainly consists of vegetable matter such as algae, fruit, roots, and various aquatic plants. They occasionally supplement this diet with worms, insects, snails, crustaceans, fish, small amphibians, and carrion. The carapace of this species may reach upwards of 16 inches in length, but the typical length ranges from 6 to 8 inches. The females of the species are typically larger than males, with males sporting longer claws and proportionally larger tails. Due to their size, temperament, and ease of care, radiant sliders are the most kept pet turtle on Earth and as such rank amongst the world's top 100 most invasive species. Uh, and there are feral populations now found throughout Canada, Australia, Europe, Great Britain, South Africa, several Caribbean islands, Israel, Bahrain, the Mariana Islands, Guam, Japan, and mainland Southeast Asia. Mating typically occurs between the months of March and July, and in the following weeks, the female excavates a hole in a beach, shore, or riverbank using her hind legs. Uh, in this hole, she will deposit between 2 and 30 eggs before reburying them. Uh, incubation lasts between 59 to 112 days, after which the hatchling turtles will break open their eggshells but remain in the nest for another 20-ish days, growing and absorbing their yolk sac before setting off and entering the water. A red-eared slider reaches sexual maturity around 5 years of age and may live upwards of 40 years under ideal conditions. 
Next up is the giant Pacific octopus, also known as the northern Pacific giant octopus. It is a large marine cephalopod belonging to the genus Interoctopus. Uh, and it can be found throughout the coastal waters of the North Pacific along the continental United States, Canada, Alaska, Russia, Japan, and the Korean Peninsula. From the intertidal zone to around 6,600 feet deep, uh, it prefers cold, oxygen rich water. In the wild, they typically feed upon shrimp, crabs, scallop, abalone, conkle, snails, clams, lobsters, fish, seabirds, small sharks, and even other octopuses. Uh, the Pacific giant octopus uh, are preyed upon themselves by Pacific sleeper sharks and various marine mammals, including harbor seals, sea lions, sea otters, and sperm whales. Rarely reaching upwards of 110 pounds in weight and sporting a radial arm like span of some 20 feet in length, the giant Pacific octopus is far away the largest known octopus species. Uh, with some more questionable reports listing individuals upwards of 30 feet in length and 300 pounds in weight. The giant Pacific octopus are commonly kept as on display at aquariums due to their size and interesting physiology, and have demonstrated the ability to recognize uh, humans that they frequently come in contact with. These responses include jetting water, changing body texture, and other behaviors that are consistently demonstrated to be specific to different individuals. Giant octopi are ranked amongst the most intelligent animals are known to solve simple puzzles, open childproof bottles, and use tools, even going so far as to open tank valves, disassemble expensive equipment, and generally wreak havoc on labs and aquaria. Some research even supports that they are capable of motor play, dreaming, forming friendships, and having distinct personalities. A giant Pacific octopus is considered to be long-lived compared to other octopi species, um, living three to five years in the wild. To make up for its relatively short lifespan, octopus is extremely prolific, uh, and they can lay anywhere from 120 to 400,000 eggs. 120,000 to 400,000 eggs, which are coated in chorion and attached to hard surfaces by the female. The spawn is intensely cared for exclusively by the mother, who continues to blow water over them and groom them to remove algae and other growths. While she fulfills her duty of parental care, the female stays close to her spawn, never leading to feed. Uh, this intense parental care often leads to her death via starvation soon after the young have hatched. Uh, hatchlings are about the size of a grain of rice, and their growth rate is quite rapid, with individuals reaching maturity at just one to two years of age. Next up is the Bali duck, also known as the Balinese crested duck or the crested runner duck. It is a lightweight breed of domestic duck raised primarily for its eggs and just as pets. The Bali duck weighs around 5 to 6 pounds with a slender upright body measuring 20 to 30 inches tall. Said erect carriage is a result of a pelvic girdle that is situated more towards the tail region of the bird than compared to with other breeds of domestic duck. This structural feature allows the birds to walk or quick sip rather than waddle as seen with the other duck breeds. Bollies tend to vary between carrying their body at an angle of 60 to 70 degrees uh, to the ground, whereas Indian runners can be anywhere from 45 to 75 degrees. The Bali has a wider shoulder and heavier set body than the Indian runner, and a coarser head and bill shape. Uh, its iconic crest is the result of a heterozygous genetic mutation that causes a skull deformity. The dominant gene mutation causes a gap to grow at the duck embryo skull. This gap uh, is filled by a mass of fatty tissue that emerges. On the fatty tissue, feathers start to grow, creating both a large and full, or sometimes rather skinny crests that are less broad. The Bali duck comes out comes in a variety of standard colors, including brown, white, gray, black, or with a mallard style patterning. Bali ducks make great free ranging ducks and are equally likely to be found swimming in ponds and streams as they are to be foraging in grassy meadows for worms, slugs, snails, and insects. Uh, they are very reliable layers, producing around 120 to 250 eggs per year. Hens usually lay, uh, when actually producing offspring, usually lay 9 to 13 eggs to complete a clutch before sitting on the eggs for around 28 days uh, until they hatch. Properly crossed ducklings will typically result in having only 
uh, of live hatches also possess an aggressive gene mutation. Around 25% won't possess it, uh, and then the same gene that causes the genetic mutation also decides by preventing around 25% of fertilized eggs from ever hatching in the first place. Under ideal conditions, Bali ducks may live upwards of 10 years. And our extinct animal of the week is the woolly rhinoceros, also known as Celadonta antiquitus. It is an extinct species of rhinoceros that was commonly found throughout Europe and Asia during the Pleistocene epoch uh, until the end of the last glacial period. Woolly rhinoceros remains have been known long before the species was described and were the basis of some mythological creatures. Native peoples of Siberia believed the horns were the claws of giant birds, and a rhinoceros skull found in Lagenfurt, Austria in 1335 was believed to be that of a dragon. Other bone remains have been attributed to griffins, uh, and, in 19, and in 1590, uh, a skull was used as the basis of the head of a statue of a lindworm. One of the earliest scientific descriptions of the water rhinoceros was made in 1769, uh, when the naturalist Peter Simon Pallas wrote a report known as Expedition to Siberia, where he found a skull and two horns in permafrost. Later in, 19, in 1799, Joan... Johann Friedrich Blumenbach studied these and other rhinoceros bones from a collection of the University of Göttingen and proposed the scientific name Rhinoceros Antiquitus. The, geologist, the geolo geologist Heinrich George Braun moved the species into Celadonta in 1831 because of its differences in dental formation from members of the rhinoceros genus. An adult woolly rhinoceros typically measures between 9 and 0.8 to 12 and a half feet from head to tail and around 6 to 7 feet tall at the shoulder, uh, weighing in at around 4,000 to 6,000 pounds. The two horns were made of keratin with the long horn reaching forward and the smaller horn was back around between the eyes. Compared to other rhinoceroses, uh, the woolly rhinoceros had a longer head and body and shorter legs. Its shoulder was raised to a powerful hump which was used to support the animal's massive front horn. The, uh, the hump also contained a fat preserve to aid the animal in survival throughout the desolate winters of the mammoth steppe. Frozen specimens indicate the rhino's long fur coat was reddish brown with a thick undercoat that lay under a layer of long, coarse, guard hair thickest on the withers and the neck. The woolly rhino's main habitat was the mammoth steppe, a large open landscape covering a wide ranges of grasses and bushes. Uh, here they preferred to dwell on lowlands and river valleys where they fed on grasses and woody plants including conifers, willows, and adlers, along with flowers, forbs, and mosses. Uh, with their massive horns and sides, adults had few predators, but young and infirm individuals were routinely preyed upon by animals such as hyenas, cave lions, and humans. Woolly rhinoceros populations started to greatly decline some 100,000 years ago due to a combination of climate change and overhunting by humans. Uh, with some isolated populations surviving throughout pockets of Siberia until around 8,000 BCE. As always, take care of my guys, gals, and my binary pops.